Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to prepare images for a slideshow. We use Luminar. Now, I'm excited because I have my co-host with me today, Angela Andrew. Hello, Angela. Thanks for having me on the show today. It's really fun to be here in this segment with you. I know. Well, you have your, your coffee break starts at what time? It's at 1, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific on Facebook in the Skyland Photography Facebook group. Got it. So we have, we have two of them. We're doing a day. One at 11 that I do Eastern time. And then yours is at, you just said 1? 1, 1 p.m. Pacific. So that's what, 4 p.m. your time. Gotcha. 4 p.m. Eastern. And what I love about this, <laughs> so on Wednesdays, we're going to start doing our co uh, hosting with each other, which is pretty cool, because then we swap ideas back and forth. So, this yes. is awesome. And then after this show, tell them what do we have. We have something really new and cool and fun coming up for you. We are going to be doing a live chat on Zoom every Wednesday afternoon. We're calling it Luminar Happy Hour, where it's not so much about live edits. We're just inviting you to come and chat with us, ask us your questions, and just have fun and get to know each other. So that will be actually at 2.30 p.m., so 5.30 Eastern, and we hope you'll join us. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, let me take back over. So we're back to here. So. This topic came up because, again, um, necessity is the mother of invention, right? My brother Tommy, my older brother, just passed away yesterday. And so my sister said, hey, you're the one in charge of doing all of the slideshows for the uh, celebration of life. So I always get, I'm always with that task. And people always ask, and I'm sure they do that with you too, Angela. They ask you, well, how do you prep images for slideshows? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you that. Now, before we begin, let's just take a moment. We want to thank our partner, Fujifilm, for helping make these episodes possible. Um, Fuji reminds us to stay safe, stay creative, and stay at home. Oh, sorry, Angela. One moment. <laughs> no problem. I know it is trying to figure out, you know, which button to push and which screen to well, switch I to. I mean, I do it all the time. This is always <laughs> slow. So Fuji, let's see. Moment, one second. And there we are, we're back. Yeah, for whatever reason, um, the Stream Deck, when uh, Skype is on, for whatever reason, the stream deck decides to um, act a little wonky on me. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Now, here's my brother Tommy. Look at that smile. All right, so here he is. And um, let's see if I did this one already. So when I took this image, let, let, let it redraw for a moment. I knew that the area was, uh, was dark. And I just, I knew it wasn't going to look good. Look at this. So... I did the best that I could. That was shot with a, oh my Lord. <laughs> I don't know where I got a Nikon D50 from, but it was shot with a D50 and the um, F-stop was 5.6, 1 60th of a second ISO 400. So this was extremely, extremely um, underexposed and just not, not a good looking picture. I mean, he looks great. The photo's not the greatest, so I like to come right over to the essential tools or the essential looks. I I like starting with a look first. Look what that did. Before and after, it already made the image look so much better. Just that one simple recipe in the looks, it added, let's see, um, it added the essentials, uh, light, enhanced, AI enhancer, and of course, color. So AI Enhancer, look at this, before and after, just, I mean, AI Enhancer just does wonders. Now, I like it, I just want the colors to be a little bit better, so I'm going to jump down to the Pro Tools, and for the Pro Filter, I'm going to turn it on, and I'm just going to give it an arbitrary amount first. Here's where I'm going to change the U. Oh, I like right about... See, right about there, and I'll dial it back a little. There we are. Before 
after. Look at that. So I just did a real quick color color correction with that photo filter. Now I don't want to have to do this over and over again. So I'm going to save it as a new look. And the great Tommy V version two. So the next image I have here, it was shot under very similar lighting conditions. Let it redraw. And instead of me going back through everything we just did, all I'm going to do is come down here. And now I do have a whole lot of these, but the great Tommy V, I click on it. And boom, now I have the images looking very similar. Now, let me just do one more thing, Angela, then I'm going to have you take over on yours. So that's editing the images. Great. Well, I know I want to display this on a regular large TV, and the aspect ratio is going to be 16 by 9. So if I come over here and I, X, and I select crop, I'm going to go to the canvas tools, and I select crop, I know I want it to be 6 by 9 ratio. So I'll come over here and select 16 by 9. And now I can actually see what everyone else will see on the screen. So here it is. And select done. Now, just because I made that 16 by 9 doesn't mean the image is 1920 by 1080. So if I click on info, sure enough, this image is, or well, actually, you know what? That'll give me the info of what it is currently. I'm going to click export. Here we go. So when I click export, it's showing the actual size is 3008 by 1692. So that's not 1920 by 1080, but the dimensions are. So all I need to do is click on long edge, change that to 1920. Now the short edge will automatically be switched to 1080. And let's see, um, export. I already have one in there. I'm just going to tell it to replace it. And then it'll, it'll export it. And then we're done with it. So I have that set. And I have these rest of these images here. I already went through some of these so you can see what they look like. Um, for this one particular image here, my sister wanted me to remove. <laughs> Angela, you'll love this one. She asked me if, if our software could easily remove subjects from the background. Okay. Or Yeah, so so I'm wondering. So my sister's asking me that, and because I'm the youngest in the family, I thought she was messing with me, saying she's going to remove me from the images. And then it dawned on me. She looks absolutely phenomenal in my old wedding photos. <laughs> so she wants to use those pictures, but she wants me to remove certain people out of that picture. Um, so that's why she asked if we could if our software does it. And look, it does an amazing job. Um, and again, I could I could go on the bottom and remove the shadows, but overall, that works really good, and we're set from there. So I have that. Now let me switch over to you, Angela. Um, All right. I just love my older sister. <laughs> um, so we have that set, but I'm doing this as a, a way to do um, uh, what? Uh, the celebration of life, right? What what could be one of the reasons why you're building a uh, slideshow? So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons and most of us are probably gonna be using it for family situations. For instance, my mom likes to make slideshows for family members' anniversaries and birthdays and just send them out to the whole family with some really great images to kind of show, you know, what's happening so far in life. So, I mean, those are always great fun things to do it for. But another thing you could do is if you're preparing images to show to a client, you can crop those to the, to the 16 by nine to show them on a big TV screen and show them either at their office, on their computer screen, however it best works, but you can use that as a tool to show your work for clients. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna show you a little bit about today is how I took a few of the images from my portfolio and cropped them to a 16 by nine, not only does that really work that crop work really well for these images. They're then sized so I can show them on a regular TV screen and they'll look beautiful. So, beautiful. All right, so I have your, your screen up now. 
Awesome. All right, so this is an image I captured in Virginia, a place called Mariner's Park. And every fall we get these beautiful, beautiful fall colors. So I'm gonna go and do just a little bit of quick enhancement. This image doesn't need much, but I'm gonna go to our AI Enhance. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit. That's just gonna wake up the shadows, make the colors pop a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go into my AI structure and bring out a little bit more detail. That doesn't need a whole lot, but right about there, let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. It just added a little bit of life to the image. Now, what I don't particularly like about this particular photo is that we have these bright spots up here in the sky. I find them to be a little bit detracting. So we can go up here and click on our crop tool and we'll go to our aspect ratio, choose 16 by nine. And then we can adjust that to where we've kind of gotten rid of the space up here at the top that doesn't really add to the image. And we can even modify that a little bit, bring it in, adjust the placement. And then I think that's a much more pleasing image. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit return on my keyboard to go ahead and commit that crop. And then as Vanelli just showed you, you can go ahead and export that as a 1920 by 1080. And it is good to go for displaying on just about any screen and it will look beautiful. Well, that's awesome. So I have a couple, yeah. No, no, Angela, um, I have you back on screen. So what, what happens right. if you don't want to crop it? Um, my, you know, if you, if you well, want it to be, so we have to have a 1920 by 1080. That's the screen. But if we don't want to crop it, what are some things you do? Um, I would typically, if, if the crop didn't really work for the image, I would honestly just leave it as is and then set my slideshow to show a black border Perfect. on the right and left or top and bottom, depending on how the image was sized. Yeah. So, so, um, so that doesn't yeah, bother me so much, but if you really want it to fill the whole screen, the 16 by nine is the way to go exactly. if it works for the image. Yeah. So, so sometimes I have to admit, um, what I'll do is I'll go into a graphics editing program, which is Photoshop, and I would create a 16 by nine black screen and then just lay the image in the middle of it or wherever I want it to be. So now it's guaranteed to show up 16 by nine with all the borders on it. Absolutely. That's a that's a great way to do it as well. And that way you have full control over where that border is located. You can even do like a little bit more narrow on top, a little wider on the bottom for a bit more artistic framing, which is kind of right. nice. That's awesome. Now, what do you use for your slideshows? Um, you know, I typically use like iMovie or I use Lightroom to put my slideshows together. Gotcha. I, I don't you know, do a whole lot of them, to be quite honest. I did like about Lightroom <laughs> is... Um, if you didn't want a no frills um, slideshow, just where it just rotates across the screen, that was the one I went with. That that was the one I used to I would use, put music to it and stuff like that. Um, I did search. I'm going to show my screen. Let's see. I did search, and here we go. A uh, studio maker. That's the name of it. So um, I, I I typed in Angela free Windows um slideshow maker and this one came up and after i installed it it said great if you like it 59 dollars." so <laughs> so i'm gonna hit play for a minute yep and it lets me look at what it's what i like about this it's doing that slow slow fade where the the, the images are moving slowly and now here's a good example of the image that wasn't 16 by 9 and I like how it just brought it across the screen. And then, of course, you put the ending text. And the text I put was Tommy Vanelli. He lived life with passion. Um, boy, did he have passion. So um, that that's just one example. And like you said, if you're, a, if you're a Mac user, I'm on you now. If you're a Mac mm -hmm. user, you said you have, what was it? Uh, I'm free. So it just, it's, it's built into the Mac ecosystem. It's free. Um, I use it to edit you know, fun little videos of my cats. You can put slideshows in it. You can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So between the Apple Photos app and the iMovie, you can make some really fun things happen. You can add music from your music library. You can add captions, all sorts of fun stuff. Gotcha. And I think what I'll do is I'll do a little more research on this, on uh, which uh, slideshows I think is one of the best ones to use. Um, and, and if any of our viewers, please, if you guys, um, if any of you, have any suggestions on what slideshow presenters you use let us know but i do i just love the fact that with, with luminar we're able to crop the image to the size we want but then we're also able to export it to the exact pixels that we need 
right? Absolutely. Very helpful. Awesome. Well, All right. Great. Well, do we have time to do one more image? Yeah, let's do one more. All right, cool. So I've got this beautiful one. This was taken out on the Morrow Ooh, Strand State Beach. Um, I was there for a workshop and they brought out models and horses. And every time I've done an event like this, it's so much fun. So my goal when I do this is always to get the horse's feet off the ground, all four hooves off the ground. And I love that this has a little bit of motion blur to it. And it's it's colorful, but I think we can make it pop a little bit more with Luminar. So I'm going to go to... First, let's go to our crop tool. Let's go ahead and get that 16 by nine set and also straighten the horizon. It is off just a little bit, as you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and straighten that out. And I know a lot of people like to be very precise with getting the horizon straight. Personally, I just eyeball it. And when you grab outside of the image, you get that double headed arrow. It brings up a more refined grid so you can really line up and see where it's supposed to be level. So I think that looks good. And then we can go to our aspect ratio and choose that 16 by nine. And this image works so well at this aspect because I can go ahead and move it up a little bit to where my horizon line is right on that line of the thirds. And then my subject here on the horse is on this line of the thirds, which just, it's so pleasing to look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And then let's do a couple of things to really make the colors in this image come out. If I go here to AI Enhance, I can pull up the AI accent, but I don't really think that that kind of level of detail that it's pulling out in the contrast looks all that great. So I'm gonna leave that at zero and let's do a little bit of sky enhancer. And I like this because it's just darkening up the clouds here in the sky and giving it a little bit more texture and a little bit more color. And then I wanna work on some of these aqua tones. So I'm gonna go down to the color tool, click into the aqua channel, and I'm just going to boost up the saturation of my aquas just a bit right there, and then maybe add just a touch of vibrance. I think that looks great. And then to kind of finish this off, I'll do a vignette. Now, if you watch my show on, on Facebook, you'll notice that I have a very unique vignetting technique. I go ahead and I take my mount slider all the way down to negative 100, and then I go ahead and adjust the size. I'm gonna bring that a bit smaller. I'll make it a little bit more round because my subject over here is a bit more round. I'll take that feather, bring that up pretty high because I want a nice smooth transition. In this case, I think my subject is very well lit, so I don't need any extra inner light. Next, I'll click on choose subject. I'll place my vignette right over my subject. And then I'll grab the amount slider and bring that up. And just so it's kind of just kissing those edges and drawing our eye back to our subject. I don't want to have it be a very dark, ugly thing. So that's what it kind of starts out looking, but it allows you to very precisely place where you want that uh, that vignette to take an effect. So I'll go ahead and click done on that. And let's take a look at the before and the after. Subtle changes, but it really makes the colors stand out and I think makes it a lot more beautiful. So there we go, Vanelli. That is awesome. Yeah, what I just did in the comments, were, hey, thank you so much, that was awesome. Now, for everyone in the comments below, um, I did add a link to the, where we're, let me pull this up right here. One moment. There we go. I did add a link in our comments. I hope it's there. And we're going to be doing a Luminar happy hour live chat with Angela and Vanelli. No Kit and Russell. That doesn't mean you guys should, you know, you can have whatever favorite beverage you want. I'll also be drinking coffee because it'll be like, what, 530? So that'll be fine. So we have that coming up. And this will be the very first one we're doing. We're using Zoom. Um, let me know if you guys see it in the chat. If not, check the Facebook or it's also, well, to the chat. So, well, hey, Angela, thank you so much for joining me. And you and I will be together in, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. Yep, we'll be doing, we'll be back online in about 10 minutes on Zoom. And I think I'll probably go grab like a seltzer water or something because it's only 20 after two right now in California. So it's a little early to <laughs> grab an adult beverage. <laughs> well, that sounds great. Well, guys, hey, thank you. And again, I wanted to dedicate this episode to my brother, Tommy. Thank you so much for believing in me, you know, growing up as a child. Um, I just, you're awesome. So that's how we do a simple slideshow. And it's something I think would be really cool for your next family get togethers, or if in our case, uh, an unfor unforeseen happening in your family, at least people can see these really cool images and it just gives them a sense of comfort. And honestly, people are asking me, well, why are we still doing this work here? To me, this is therapeutic. So. Sometimes when certain things happen like that, whatever makes you feel therapeutic, and I know these images, uh, calling my nieces, my nephews, 
they're all sending me these photos and they're so excited. And then when I swap out the skies in a lot of these images or make the images look even better, they're even more excited because now they have something extra they can keep. So thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you on the next Coffee Break. Bye guys.